Hi, I'm Patu from Prefin Cal, and in this video, let's discuss how to convince yourself or your friends uh, to start investing in equity. Uh, sometimes this may be useful uh, to basically reinforce our beliefs, our decisions, because the uh, equity market can be risky and you can lose money. And it can also be useful to help other people because uh, you, you clearly know that they are not managing their money well. Most of the money is locked up in insurance policies and so on. So you can use uh, uh, this video or the, there are two articles in the description box. One is this article which I wrote a few years back and uh, the calculator associated which can uh, generate the slides that I am going to show you. So let's uh, take the first example. So let's say that uh, something costs uh, 10 lakh uh, today, right? And uh, if you have 10 lakh today, you will immediately buy it, obviously. But you don't have 10 lakh today. And uh, so, which means that you have to save up for it or invest for it so that uh, the investment amount is higher than the cost of what you want to buy and uh, you will then be able to buy it. But then the, the cost of what you want to buy will not remain at 10 lakhs. Everybody knows this. Just like petrol prices keep increasing every day, uh, because of uh, a factor called inflation, the uh, cost of the uh, the commodity or the service that you want to buy will keep in, you know, increasing. Let us assume that it increases year on year at a rate of 8%. So the inflation rate is assumed to be 8%. And the blue line is the cost. It starts at 10, uh, 10 lakhs that is today and it keeps moving up. That's the cost. So, so you will have to attain it. You will have to some at some point in time, you, the value of your investment or the value of your savings should be greater than the cost of the uh, of what you want to buy of your dream. So only then you will be able to buy. So let us say you start investing 5000 rupees a month for that. And let us say um, for sake of simplicity that the um, uh, average annualized return is about 12%. Uh, we are not talking about asset allocation everything here. Just an illustration to uh, obviously if, if I have about 50-60% of equity and 40% uh, of fixed income, 12% is very difficult to get but uh, this is just an illustration. Let's run with it. And of course, this is post-tax. I am assuming post-tax also. So the inflation is 8%, the assumed uh, annualized return on your investment, that is this is the return at the end of the investing period, is about 12%. So there's a, there's a gap of 4%, that's approximately the real return. So uh, the return is higher than the inflation, you call it the real return, approximately the difference, that's 4%. So after 19 years, after 19 years of investing 5000 rupees a month, uh, you your um, investment value will be equal to the uh, cost. So the cost is moving up. That's the blue line. You start investing. It's coming from downstairs. It's coming from zero somewhere here and it's picking up, picking up, picking up. It will take 19 years for your investment to uh, match to be equal to the value to the then cost of what you want to buy. Take 19 years. That's so at that point, so you will be able to uh, buy whatever you want to buy anytime after 19 years because your uh, that's when the two so the green line uh, is your investment that should cross the blue line and where it crosses when your dream will be achieved. So that's the general idea. We will be using the same pattern uh, for the next few slides. I have another five slides, it will be same. So it will take 19 years for your goal to get achieved. So recognize. Um, there are three parameters here. Uh, well, there are four inputs. One of them is the current cost that is not in your control. You are not uh, doing anything about it. The inflation of that uh, commodity is also not in your control. There are two things that are in your control. The amount you can invest and the return that you get from your investment to some extent are in your control. We are going to see how these two, uh, 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 when we change these numbers, how they um, uh, uh, change the final output that is achieving the goal after 19 years. That's the final output. So let's take the second example. So have a look at these numbers. So the next example is I have the current cost is 10 lakhs. The inflation remains at 8%. Now the person says I will not take any kind of risk. I will not involve myself in stock markets. Nothing. I will be in safe 
fixed uh, f- um, fixed deposits or LIC kind of endowment policies or whatever, I will get an uh, which will give me something like a six percent post tax uh, annual return, and uh, uh, that's it. That's all I'm going to do. Now, if this person must achieve that goal, please recognize the current cost is the same, the inflation is the same. So the blue line, which is the cost, has increased. Uh, in time, the same way as in the previous example, where the return was 12%, but the return has come down from 12% to 6% now. What has happened? If the person should achieve that goal after 19 years, then they must invest 10,200 more. That is more than double of that 5,000 which was invested in the previous example. So in the previous example, you needed to invest only 5,000 to achieve the goal in 19 years. But if you reduce the return, you need to invest more to be able to achieve the return, achieve the uh, goal in the same duration. Obviously, for things like uh, your retirement or your um, child's education, the when you need the money is more or less rigid. I mean, of course, retirement is a little bit flexible these days because people retire early. But child's education, you can't say, okay, I don't have enough money. My child has finished 12 standard. Uh, he will wait after two years. And then he will go to a college or you can't say i'm gonna uh, i don't care i'm just gonna start uh, i'm just gonna make him get an education loan that's not something uh, that's ideal right we need to do a little better than that so that's the essential idea so if you are going to stick to lower returns then to achieve the goal because inflation is not in your control to achieve the goal at, at, to have enough money at the time you need the money you must invest more there's no problem. You can inv- you can uh, stick to fixed deposits or fixed income, but can you invest more? Most of us cannot. That is the biggest, biggest problem. So if you want to match inflation after tax or even beat it after tax, there has there is no choice for the low investment that many of us have to make. There is no choice that we have to take on risk. Only when we take on some risk can we have a shot at beating inflation. And uh, the reason for choosing equity for that risk is uh, one, it is transparent. Mm-hmm. It is risky, all right, but it is transparent. It's a lot easy, a um, lot more transparent than real estate or any other privately funded schemes. And uh, the whole uh, idea of uh, that equity has the potential, a chance to beat inflation over the long run, is comes from the idea that uh, companies borrow money. Uh, at a little more than the inflation rate. They will borrow money at, uh, let's say, 9% or 10% from banks or other lenders. So in order to stay in business, their profits must grow higher than that at uh, 11%, 12% for them to stay in business. And they will give us a piece of that profit when we are uh, shareholders uh, of that stock, of that company, when you buy a piece of that company. So that's the general simplistic idea of how stock markets have the potential to beat inflation of course markets being markets they can uh, uh, they they are uh, very responsive to greed suddenly it will shoot up and then they are responsive to fear they will suddenly crash so that those kind of things can happen so that's where risk management comes you have to have a proper asset allocation you cannot aim 12 percent that's one thing you have to aim less and then you have to have a balanced uh, allocation of equity and fixed income but this is a simple idea to uh, explain or convince yourself that yes you have to take on that much risk there's no other choice to spare for certain goals like retirement or child's education is only so much that's the uh, main point of course you can push this argument and learn other lessons so we'll come back to that's the second slide we saw the third one suppose again current cost is 10 lakh we have now increased the inflation from 8% to 10% and the annualized return is 12%. That remains the same as the first slide, it's 12%. So earlier 8%, 12%, the gap was 4%. Now it is becoming 2%. The gap is only 10%, 12%, it's only 2% excess return above inflation. Again, if the person decides to not change that monthly investment of 5,000, the goal will not be achieved in uh, 19 years. In fact, it will take 30 years. So please recognize if the uh, gap between inflation and annual return decreases, uh, then the annual investment must be increased. So
so even though there is a positive alpha that is the uh, real return is uh, not alpha I should, I should say real return the real return is positive here the return is higher than the inflation the goal is not achieved in 19 years because the investment amount is less so don't simply say i want to beat inflation you must beat inflation in two ways one by trying to beat inflation in terms of returns but also making sure you invest uh, enough if you are not investing enough your goals will not be achieved even though you beat inflation so it's like operation successful patient died that kind of scenario so don't uh, be very very careful about that you have to invest enough so uh, one more example 10 lakhs current cost 8% inflation the annual uh, return is now 6% so minus 2% real return approximately the monthly investment is only 8000 so this person says uh, I will uh, be only in fixed income um, but I can only increase my investment to 8000 that's all I can do then notice that the green line never meets the blue line the, the investment value will always be lower than the cost the then cost of the service or commodity you want uh, uh, desired and therefore the person will never be able to achieve their goals this is the big 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 danger of uh, sticking to fixed income and not investing enough if you are, if you want to stick to fixed income you pay the price you have to invest more more than twice are you ready to pay the price most of us are not one more example 10 lakhs 8% inflation, the average annual return is 10%, the monthly investment is only 1500. Again recognize there is a 2% real return, but since the monthly investment is extremely low, again the uh, green line does not cross the blue line, therefore uh, again uh, operation successful, obtained real returns, but patient died, per patient, uh, the goal cannot be achieved. So again be careful. Don't focus on returns, returns, returns. Don't focus on real returns. You have to match you ha match it with the correct amount of investment. Otherwise, your goals will not be achieved. That is the reason why I keep saying take some risk, but focus on the investment amount. Focus on the target corpus and forget about returns. You have to manage risk. So that this would be the last slide. Uh, current cost is 10 lakhs. Inflation is 8%. Monthly investment is uh, 1,500. So if the person says I can invest only 1500 rupees then what to, should be the return for me to achieve the goal in about 19-20 years then the annualized return is 20%. It is simply not possible to have an annualized return for 20 years uh, to be 20%. It's simply not possible. Taking on too much risk does not mean too much return. Please recognize taking on too much risk only means too much risk. There is you you will be taking on so much risk that a single slip uh, it will it will your portfolio will be underwater for years and years and years so do not compensate your inability to invest by taking on more risk that is just plain stupid so uh, please try out the visual goal planner and also uh, share this video with uh, your friends who who are on the fence about investing in mutual funds or in equity uh, let me know if you have any questions I have my Q&A coming up so uh, fire away your questions in the comment section and I will try to answer them if I know the answer to So, thanks for watching and uh, thank you for all the support to my son's video yesterday. Uh, he enjoyed that. Thank you. Bye-bye.